Hello. You're here. Why? I don't know. I'm here, and I don't even know why I'm here, but I am. So, uh, Stuff's happening. A lot of things are going on. It's hot. If you're wondering what's happening. It's hot here in Texas, as it is in other places, but it's hot here every year, so don't be surprised. You know, I survived the... Texas. Whoa, what happened there? there? Wow. I thought I heard a recording earlier. I was like, hey, uh, your phones are on silent, right? And everybody's like, yeah. Um, so anyway, 1980, I survived the heat wave of 1980. And the other heat wave before that was back in the 50s when it was hotter than it is right now. So global warming, come on. Where you at? We're waiting on you. Melt the ice cap so we can get some refreshments here or something. Send some water this way. We do need water. We need some rain. We're in a drought. Cows are thirsty. A lot of stuff's happening today. We're going to talk about cow stuff. We've got plenty of cow stuff to talk about. We'll hit that. We're going to talk about feedlot stress. We're going to talk about conspiracy theories in Kansas. Not Dorothy, but at the feedlots. A lot of folks have a lot of information about feedlots. It's never been to one, so we're going to talk about that. Um, a lot of stuff going on rodeo-wise. Cowboy Christmas stuff. There's rodeos happening everywhere. PBR's got a lot of stuff going on at Cowtown. So be sure and check that out at the Cowtown Coliseum. Uh, what else we got here? We got some great odd news stories for you guys because you all enjoy the odd news. Um, what else do we have? We got a movie trailer of a movie that's coming out because everybody is capitalizing on the success of Yellowstone. So everybody's hopping on that horse, you know. Doing a movie, you had uh, Yellowstone come out, and you had Outer Rains, and you had Rust, where the, one of the Baldwin guys was trying to make a movie. It sucked real bad. So it's like, I'll just shoot somebody, and maybe people want to watch it. So, you know, that didn't happen. Then you got another movie called Nope that's coming out. There's a Billy the Kid thing on Amazon I've been watching, which is terrible. And then uh, this movie called Nope. So we'll show you a trailer for that. And in the studio, we have. The one and only owner of the bona fide bucking bulls. You've seen those bulls bucking in the PBR, and he's here to talk about stuff. How's it? <laughs> Terror on the Prairie, also. Yeah, Terror on the you Prairie. Missed we missed one of the movies. Well, we did that trailer uh, a couple weeks ago. Okay. Well, I, then I missed one of the movies. You missed it. Yeah. Did you watch it yet? I haven't watched it. I've listened to Gina Carano talk about it at length and Cowboy Cerrone talk about it multiple times, but I've yet to see the film. Have you seen the film? I have not seen the film because it's on Ben Shapiro's special website or something. Oh, that's right. It's only on the magic website. Yeah. Yeah. I need to get, yeah. I need to get with that guy and ask him about maybe giving us some, some access to that site. But I, listen, I like I the catch way him, he talks. Well, I catch him every now and then on the, I catch him every now and then on the radio. And I'm like, man, you talk about a chat, a chat, a cat scratching a chalkboard. His voice, you gotta, you gotta tone that stuff down. He's got a, I mean, I would guess Adderall, but whatever, yeah. whatever it is, he's very energetic. Yeah, I uh, would, I would need some of that probably. Like muffle those mics just a little bit. <laughs> it's intense. It's intense. It, oh, it is. Man. Similar to where Indians lived. Or yeah, they wait, live intense you can't well. say that anymore. No, uh, indigenous yeah. people. Yeah. So yeah. My the, mistake. Uh, prequel to the Americans. <laughs> That's what they call it. Oh, okay. Speaking of prequels, they changed. If you if you haven't been watching much of the internet, anything at all, you do you did find out that uh, the Yellowstone prequel got changed from 1932 to 1923. Okay. So, so I'm like, just... you know what? We're going to do this year, but let's jump back another 10 and see what happens. I think they're probably... Just a dyslexic guy that was doing the <laughs> yeah. write up and it like, did it by mistake. Hit that button. <laughs> yeah. All right. But, but these, now we uh, we ran the, tra we, we got the trailer out there in a bunch of spots, but where Taylor Sheridan's got, I don't know, five or six movies in the works. He's got a lot of stuff going on simultaneously. Well, that's, that's what they call something about striking while the iron's hot. Yeah, I've heard of such things. Extend those 15 minutes. Yeah, 16 minutes. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Speaking of Yellowstone stuff, uh, the Carity Foundation has this celebrity cutting with Yellowstone every December in Fort Worth, Texas. And uh, we should be talking to Leah Turner at some point 
during this show, who is a uh, Latina country superstar, who also uh, does some cutting out there during they've, the event. They've got an auction coming up from that ranch with those horses, don't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, I've seen. Oh, that they've got on the they've internet. got stuff going on. All the, have you been out there to Bosky to the Bosky Ranch yet? I have not. You can go out there and get a buffalo burger. Buffalo of a real buffalo. Or is it just called like they say it's buffalo? It just have buffalo sauce. What's called a bison burger? Okay, called a bison burger. All right, I'm in. I'm sold. I'll try it. Well, I tried it, but I'm I'm on. I need. I think I need to try another one first before I can try a double. Oh, it was double. That thing was huge. Yeah. Like put the whole buffalo in here. Yeah. It's good for you. It's lean meat. But it was it was good. They got a nice little place out there. The Bosque Ranch. They got some cutting horse stuff going on they got some stuff coming up i think it's this weekend so check that out um i guess we're waiting on have we got any uh responses from the interweb nets nothing okay so let's do uh let's talk about you got a burger king story over there i might because when i saw this and it said vintage it was it was talking about vintage vintage Burger King. Yeah, it was like it's a it's a vintage thing. It's been encapsulated for thousands of years. Oh, the abandoned Burger King. Yeah. For, wait, there's a thousand year old Burger King. Well, they made it sound like that. This guy's a real king. Oh yeah. All right. Well, let's see. Let's find out about it. An abandoned Burger King. Well, it's in Delaware, so we know what comes from there. What comes from Delaware? Ah, uh, there was Besides, some guy, old dudes fall off bikes, stuff like that. Wait, <laughs> hold on, what? <laughs> Old dudes that fall off bikes. Oh, oh. Mumble around. Oh, I've heard of this guy. So it makes sense okay. that the story would be screwed up. Right. Go ahead. Well, there's tax benefits in Delaware. That's oh, why. Oh, okay. A lot of businesses are located in Delaware. Maybe biking businesses. I don't know. There should be one. I would invest in knee pads, too. Yeah. But that's for the casting couch. Yeah. All right, so what happened with this Burger King? All right, apparently it's an abandoned one. Abandoned right. Burger King found behind a wall at the Delaware Mall. <laughs> And it even rhymes the headline just for fun. <laughs> All right. Officials at a Delaware mall said they were blown away when a wall at the shopping center turned out to be hiding something unexpected. A completely intact Burger King restaurant with vintage decor. <laughs> and a vintage, vintage. Burger Okay. King. Vintage decor. Okay. Think about this word vintage. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Tom Dalkey, the general manager of the Concord Mall in Wilmington, said he was unaware of the eatery until a photo recently snapped by mall vendor Jonathan Pruitt went viral on the Twitter. Twitterverse.com. Google it. It's kind of cool. When I first saw it, I was blown away myself, Donkey said. <laughs> he does not know how long the Burger King has been abandoned and concealed behind a wall because the current management company took over in January 2020. Twitter user Losers... Suckwad. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a real name. That's, uh, okay. <laughs> that should be your Twitter He might have been at the daddy event in Dallas, too. Yeah. That should have be everyone's Twitter handle. Um, responded to the viral post with her own... Oh, it's a woman. Oh! <laughs> Hashtag okay. me, too. All right. So, swing me around by my Twitter handle. She responded to the viral post with her own video of the Burger King, saying the facility was used as a storage room for the seasonal job she had at the mall in 2019 indicating that the previous management team was aware of the defunct business. <laughs> Donkey took Newcastle County Executive Matt Meyer on a tour of the Burger King, and a video of the visit was shared on the Newcastle County government's Facebook page. We have that video. All right. <laughs> Donkey said the former Burger King will soon be available for rent. It's kind of cool to have something that nostalgic here in the building. We're hopeful to rent it and have it occupied soon. Okay, so if you were wondering when that thing got closed down, what would you think? For it to be a vintage Burger King. 1981. Okay, well, let's check out this video. I think they say 2009. <laughs> vintage. <laughs> Good afternoon, Newcastle County. How many of you have been to the Concord Mall? Probably walked these corridors so many times. I know many of you have been to other malls. Very often, there are these shops that are closed off. Uh, I'm Matt Meyer, County Executive here with Tom Dalkey. We're standing between Cell Fun and trendy man it's just another storefront in Concord mall that's being rented out but inside is something pretty cool let's go check it out uh, 
This is probably the oldest, still intact, Burger King restaurant in the world. Closed for over a decade, but still intact. Here we are. So Tom, this is big. How many square feet are we in? Uh, it's almost 5,000 square foot. 5,000 square foot Burger King. And it kind of feels like it closed yesterday when you look in the trash here they didn't they didn't empty the trash the last day but they could uh <laughs> <laughs> nice of them to leave that for us. yeah right yeah this is uh pretty cool here you got a lot of booth space a lot of space yeah it's big it's nice too because whoever wants to come in and rent it has already got the equipment in play here it's got mm -hmm. both bent hoods are, uh, are here, so that's a great savings for whoever would want to rent the place uh, because then they don't have to install a new hood. They already have it. Do we know when this opened? I don't, unfortunately. Uh, the last I know of it was when it closed in 2009. 2009, so it's been closed for 13 years. Looked like they left us a little food here. Uh, so uh, <laughs> be careful there. You all right? I'm good. All right, good. Looks like they left us a few fries here. Yeah, there you go. In here, let's uh, go back. Can we go back behind the counter? Yeah, here? absolutely. See what we got? Yep. So why, why are we here right now? Well, it seems to have taken off in the last 24 hours. Uh, I, I've heard from uh, people as far as New York who've learned about this beautiful relic of our collective American past. Uh, all reminds us there's some nice Burger King, circa 2000 decor here. Um, and it's really gone viral. There, I've been told over 30,000 people have liked the post on Reddit. You when can I, still get Dr. Pepper. I don't know if they work. <laughs> when I woke up this morning, you know. Can you get Dr. Pepper? What? This is America. What are you talking about? Can you get you, Dr. Pepper? You should be able to. What I thought was, what I thought was interesting is it was not a construction site. It was a, not a construction zone. And you had the two main dudes wearing the hard hats that just took out of the plastic bag. It's been constructed. That was the whole point <laughs> it's, of the deal. Yeah, it's, it's been there a while. It's been yeah. there a while, guys. It's vintage, right? Yeah. Since, what, 2009? Yeah. Did he say that, 2009? I thought that's what he said. I don't know. But yeah, 2009 vintage Burger King. I thought that's what he said. For lease. I thought that is what he's talking about. But we've got a video. We're going to do a, uh, we've got a music video over there. All right, we've got a video we're going to throw out to you from Leah Turner and then when we come back we're going to talk to her Mexico. 
All right. Check that out. Don't miss a tour stop of Leah Turner. Check it out. She is named by the Grammys top five Latin country artists making things happen out there. She's also a 2022 Grammy member. Leah, what is going on? How are you guys? How's everything going? Oh, we're doing we're doing good. Just sitting out here cooking in the sun. <laughs> oh, I hear you. It's uh, 102 degrees here in Palm Springs, California. Ooh. <laughs> I guess it's about the same. Is it, a, is it a dry heat, though? It is. <laughs> it is. A, that a, makes all the difference. The yeah. dry heat makes all the difference. All the difference. All the difference. Uh, so let's talk about this. Um, Growing up, music-wise, what was your uh, your musical influence? You know, um, I grew up, my dad's a professional team roper in the rodeos. So now the joke is, um, you know, I grew up ch chasing rodeos and now I'm chasing <laughs> stages. But um, we listened to anywhere from George Strait to Chris Ledoux, um, Linda Rodstad, Julio Iglesias, um, you know, just a big range of uh, music. I always say, if you you look at my, I guess now Spotify playlist, it was it's George Strait to Julio Iglesias to Maluma to Tupac. <laughs> got a got a wide a wide range then. Yes. A, a wide range. Okay, so what about your? Let's talk about your uh, your horse background, because we know that uh, you come down here with us to uh, Fort Worth to carry to the Celebrity Cutting. Uh, the Carity yeah. Foundation's good, good place. Check it out, the Carity Foundation. But you come down here and do, and do some cutting and and some singing. Yeah. So, uh, tell us about your about your horse stuff. Yeah, well, like I said, my dad's a real American cowboy um, in the rodeo. So I grew up, you know, chasing chasing rodeos and riding and team roping and you know dipped my my boots in barrel racing and actually the first time I ever cut cattle was um i think back in 2015 when bob kingsley uh invited me down god rest his soul mm -hmm. uh and i came down it was me and tanya tucker and john party and went in there and i won the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> so i guess you could say i have a seat in the saddle oh yeah there you go and and that <laughs> and and man cutting is cutting's a whole different deal because deal. it's it's hold on don't let go because when you get out there you know you're out there in the arena you got all the people and you're just and not not necessarily just focusing on you know what you're doing at hand you're like i don't want to be the one that falls off yeah 100 <laughs> percent, especially in a herd of cattle yeah no thank you <laughs> yeah and it's different you know um you're putting your hand down and don't lift your hand because that's a three second penalty or mm -hmm. have your hand hand down at the right time because mm -hmm. that means the horse that tells the horse to start cutting, yeah. learning in to lock into that cow and knowing and, and, and it's really just trusting the horse and uh, holding on for dear life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So you've got, uh, you've got some, some new music coming out. You want to tell us about that? Yeah, so I am a second generation Mexican American. My mom's full Mexican. And to be able to bring not only the, um, you know, American cowboy culture, but also the vaquero culture and the Mexican culture into country music is an honor. So I put out an EP called Lost in Translation. And it's really just talking about instead of you know, looking at what's on the outside, look at the heart, and nothing will get lost in translation. My parents got married in a time where you didn't marry outside your race, and they let uh, hearts be seen and vibes be felt, and nothing did get lost in translation. So I thought it was appropriate or um, the right title to name an EP when you're bringing those two worlds together. Okay. And with the the stages that you've played and you've been in Nashville, yeah. all those places, is there is there an arena or a place that kind of like a bucket list of places that you want to play? You know, I've had such an incredible, um, so, so many incredible opportunities to play some really awesome stages. Um, I was on the road with Brad Paisley and Jay Gowen and Rascal Flats and. You know, I've done a lot, but one of the ones is the Houston Rodeo. I would really love to be able to play that. 
Oh, that for for your for your style of music and the music you have, that is the perfect the perfect spot for you right there in Houston. Yeah, I would love to, you know, because be my dad being from New Mexico and my mom being from California, but being Mexican and those two worlds um, come together, the American cowboy and the vaquero uh, mm -hmm. world come together so seamlessly. And country music has always had such you know, wonderful love affair with the Hispanic, the Latino, the Mexicano culture. Um, where better way to showcase that than the heart of Texas? Oh yeah, especially in Houston. Tell me about this deal. I saw this, I saw this on the internet, internet the other day. I thought it was interesting. Um, in the Woman of Country Music, you've got an exhibit set up out there. So tell us about that. Yeah, so it's an incredible honor. I still, um, I mean, I just got the chills right now. Um, the Grammys reached out to my publicist, and um, I'm the first uh, Mexican-American solo female in country music to have their clothes and their lyrics and their uh, guitar hanging in the Power of Women of Country Music a Grammy exhibit. So I went and saw it um, a couple weeks ago and I just stood there like, what is going <laughs> on, you know? You always dream of the Grammys to even maybe possibly think about trying to know your name. <laughs> right. And the fact that, you know, my clothes are hanging in that museum next to, uh, gosh, Miranda Lambert and my best girlfriend, Mickey Guyton, um, who's a Texas girl, and Taylor Swift and Shania Twain. Um, it is just Trisha Yearwood. It is just an absolute incredible honor, and um, I'm still pinching myself and thanking the Lord for it. So let's get down. Okay, you're out in California. It's hot. You're yeah. going to be cooking out. You're going to be you're going to be eating something. So if if you've got the grill fired up over yeah. there what are you throwing on it garden asada <laughs> <laughs> all right you can't you can't go no, wrong you can't, no you can't it's so funny in nashville they have no idea what it was and i was like what do you i don't understand like at every barbecue i think from texas on down mm -hmm. um there is garden asada there is pollo asado you know there's all yeah. of those things and so when you go to a place where not necessarily that hispanic latino mexicano culture is influenced there um you're kind of i was lost for words so <laughs> garden a, uh, fajitas and then yeah. of course the staples of hamburgers and hot dogs <laughs> can't ever go wrong with those yeah <laughs> oh yeah so before we get out of here um yeah. where is the best place for the folks that are watching or listening that want to go find your music or to follow you to kind of, you know, see where you're going to be on tour and stuff like that. Where's the best place yeah. for them to go? Yeah. So on all social platforms, I'm Leah Turner music, and then you can get me on all of streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple music, um, you know, Pandora, all of those. Um, so go on out there and stream and download Lost in Translation. And um, I have a new EP coming out here in the next couple of months. So be on the lookout. All right. We'll send them that way. And hopefully we'll see you again this December out here in Fort Worth. I would love that. All right. Thank you. All right, y'all. Thank you. All right. She told you where to find it. Look it up. Do it. Google download is your it. friend. Download it. Listen. Watch. Yeah, I can tell. She's got a lot of good stuff. She got a lot of good stuff in there. Yeah, I liked it. I was into it. I'll check it out. Might as well. What else you got today? You gotta listen to music, right? Driving around the country. Yeah. Good stuff. But yeah, the cutting. You know, she's <clears> been she's been to that thing three times, and I think I've been out there working with Carity for uh, about three years now. In the last two years, she was out there. She has slipped the microphone. What does this mean? Means we're gonna be getting her next. Oh time. no, interview. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, because she sings, she's singing every time. So okay. her and uh, and Jada Dryer are always singing. She slipped and, the microphone, she but she's on the megaphone. Yeah. So there. We'll make we're gonna make it a point to get all of them this next time, hopefully. Uh, okay, you talked about Burger King, the antique Burger King. I was like, what? And not as much. But okay, when I saw that stupid story about Burger King, it reminded me of these videos I saw, where it said asking questions. Asking 1900s questions to kids. Okay. That's a TikTok now. So they ask kids. They ask this, I guess the young kids today, up to 15 or whatever. They ask them like, what's a beeper? 
Okay. What's the burnt CD? Wait, that's a 1900s question? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, okay. what's a beeper? What's a burnt CD? What's a Walkman? Floppy disk. Yeah. <laughs> Pause. What's a floppy disk? I don't know. That's why Grandpa takes Viagra. I don't know. I mean, it, and they just ask these random things. Okay. And I'm just like, wow, 1900s, really? Hey. Can you say, like, 90s questions? Yeah. Okay. So we ask them what a beeper is, and they don't know. No. That's the gimmick. They don't know any of these. All right. I watched a bunch of these videos. These kids are clueless. All right. They have no idea. So we're old now. That's all it means. The one thing we're that, old, and the, we don't know the things that they know. The one thing I thought was funny was one of these kids, when they asked him what a burnt CD was, and he was like, well, that's all your favorite music, because it's hot. It's on fire. Mm. So that's a burnt CD. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're close. Okay. You, that's you, fair. You, you're getting there. Oh, and they also asked him what a rotary, what's a rotary phone. Okay. And they didn't know. Well, one of the kids is like, is that like a car phone? Oh, where you're driving around? Mm. And they ask them about, oh, and they also ask, is a what is a, phone? what's a Rolodex? Nobody knows this. Nobody knows that. They're okay. just like, uh, it's like, kind of like a watch. Like your Rolodex. Yeah, yeah. my Rolodex. That's a fake watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the, <laughs> it's the fake one. Speaking <laughs> of the fake one, we got some uh, uh, James Kahn. Let's, get, let's talk about rodeo stuff right quick. This, this story here just come hot off the press from James Kahn. Uh, he wrote it. Well, he died. Oh. No, he's dead. So he didn't write much. He's dead and gone. Uh, but James Caan, the late star actor, James Caan, what a lot of people don't know is he is a former PRCA competitor. Okay. I'm intrigued. Uh, not only was he a veteran actor working in stuff like Godfather, Misery, and Elf. I don't know why you put that in there. But he, he died at 82. So I guess that was, a, that was pretty good, I that's guess. That's a good run, 82. 82. I mean, I feel I got about maybe 10 more in me, so that's good. I mean, that's a good run. Um... So his family released a statement, blah, blah, blah. What fans of Khan may not realize is that he was a professional rodeo cowboy association tie-down roper and team roper. He earned $2,400 in his PRCA career. Okay. And this is the 80s. All right. So you got to add Biden inflation. That's half a million dollars. So that's a lot that's more, more money. That's more money my dad made his whole life. There's money. You're talking about money, dollar bills. So he loved the sport, and uh, let's see what else. He became, interested, he became interested in team roping when he was on location in Nebraska. I wonder if they made him wear a flat hat up there. They'll do it. Uh, let's see. He, he said, I didn't know what I was doing at the beginning, but I'm really good at, at a good mimic. And so he figured it out. Well, that would be an, uh, an actor, would be a good mimic. So yeah. He said, uh, they asked him about competing in the rodeo, and he said, being around people. Uh, I like the way they treat me. It was hard to win their acceptance and respect. You know, at first they was like, hey, this Hollywood dude's coming out and wants to play cowboy. He said, so I had to win to be accepted. And it worked. So in the 80s, uh, he was healing. Won some, won the uh, National Western Stock Show Rodeo in Denver, in Denver, Colorado. Big PRC Rodeo. He won that. Well, there you go. So he's James. He's all about it. James Conn, dollar Con dollar bills, Joe. Condolences to his son Scott. Did you know that he uh, found fame playing a Chicago Bear halfback named Brian Piccolo in Brian's song in 1971? I was unaw <laughs> I was unaware. <laughs> I think Brian's song is all about halfbacks, isn't it? Is that a different movie? I think that was that event you were talking about earlier. Oh, speaking of events Dallas. earlier, okay. So, we're not in Dallas all the time, but there's an event that happened in Dallas. Monkeypox is broken around everywhere. Everybody's getting monkeypox. Uh, Charles and Hessen started it with Planet of the Apes. But I don't think that's so, fact, just factually accurate. Well, who needs facts? Google it. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, there was an event that happened here in Dallas at one of these big hotels down the road from here. And it was yeah. called Daddy Fest. You might can Google this. I don't know if you want to show the pictures, but... It's called, it was Daddy no. Fest or Daddy something. I'm not even so, sure this is factually accurate. It's it's on the internet. But don't, okay. don't let <laughs> facts get in the way of truth. Yes, never let facts get in the way of a good story. We learned that by our present administration. Um, so there was a Daddy Fest or a Daddy Palooza <laughs> or whatever it's called. It was a bunch of daddies. Okay. And there was an event here. Crawl Daddies. They went fishing. Oh, yeah, they were fishing. All right. And... Daddyland Fest. That's it. Yes. 
That happened in Dallas, Texas? Yes. Okay. Tex probably knows all about it. And so yeah. there was an event here, and a guy got monkeypox. He's got a ticket stub. From, the, from this deal. Some kind of stub he got for yeah, sure. Yeah, he, he got two stubs. He's like, dang, I like, like poked all the way through. <laughs> so there was a guy there that got monkeypox. Or okay. had monkey pox. One guy? So he's spreading his monkey oh, pox around. Oh, a couple of guys yeah. got monkey pox so they, this. And they say it spread through bodily floods and sores and stuff like that. Okay. This event was in a pool. Okay. A cesspool. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a big cesspool going on. So you got all these guys in the pool because, come to find out, this daddy land, there's no mommies involved. Mm. Okay. That's a different land. Well, hence the name. Yeah, that's a different land. Yeah. So we're not talking about daddy daycare. This is different bet, daddies. No, it's probably pretty similar. Could be. So, so this happened in Dallas. Everybody's got outbreak of monkeypox. Nobody knew nothing about it until they heard about this. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to be fine. Well, now they're saying that we're not if you get monkeypox and you weren't at daddy land, people are going to think you were at daddy land. Yeah. So this like AIDS 2.0? I mean, what's happening here? I don't know. Ask the CDC. That's the only one that I go to. I check CNN and the CDC. And they know nothing. For all, all information AIDS related. Dr. Fauci, he was the king of AIDS. So oh, I yeah. read on the internet. He started, didn't he? Yeah. He broke it. It had to do with monkeys, too. Yeah. Those dang monkeys, I don't know man. about pox, but... What's the deal with the monkeys? I don't know. Everybody wants They a said that it was one. I thought they sung songs at one point. That it was one monkey. The monkeys? They yeah. said, hey, hey, we're the monkey. I bet oh, that, they did? I got $37 that says that song was played on repeat. At, at Daddy Land? Daddy Land. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it was. Uh, speaking of Daddy Land, there was an alligator in Wisconsin. Okay. So that's kind of far north for alligators to be. Okay. But animal rescuers in Wisconsin are trying to find out the owner of an unusual animal found swimming in a lake. Alligator pox. It was an alligator. Maybe alligator pox. Yeah. It was an alligator. It wasn't a crocodile. Okay. You know the difference? Um, I do, but I'll let you tell it just <laughs> for fun. <laughs> what's, the, what's, the difference? what's the difference between a crocodile and alligator? Well, a crocodile will see you after a while. <laughs> The alligator will see you later. <laughs> oh, yeah. dang. Okay. So, Long Lake. <laughs> Long Lake. Let's see that daddy landed Long Lake. Um, Pause. Oscala Boat Patrol, which turned the reptile over to the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Uh, they got it, and they was like, okay, legally, we are able to take the alligator we're, we're, this is a daddy land quote. <laughs> this, you know, this happened at daddy land too. Legally, we're able to take alligators up to 30 inches long, but this guy is much less than that. <laughs> so we're fortunate that we're in a position. We're not in a position to help this animal. So anyway, there's alligator in Wisconsin. If you, if you lost your alligator and it's not 30 inches, yeah. call daddy land and tell him he's there. If you lost your less than 30 inch alligator, <laughs> head to Wisconsin, had... go to the lost and found. Probably in an old abandoned Burger King. Probably that's where he's at. We didn't even talk about beef stuff, did we? Sort of. Not daddy lamb beef. Um, I guess I need to touch on the beef, don't I? Pause. All right, so let's see here. Uh, the feedlot. Oh, let's do that. Kansas feedlots. All right. Conspiracy, I've heard about this. Conspiracy theorists are out there everywhere about this feedlot in Kansas. Cows dead. Cows And like, like uh, possibly five to 10,000. Cows died. Of they're like, oh no, Bill Gates poisoned the cows, and then somebody else named Kelly was like, I think they watched Yellowstone and gave them some bad hay. I have an airplane. Okay, you know her, and uh, it's like, no, that's not what. That's not. I mean, I know conspiracy theories are good and it's fun and JFK down the road and all that, but you're saying John F. Kennedy did this to these cattle? Maybe. That says as likely, but go on. It could be. So, so in a feedlot, if you've never been to one, which most people have not complain about these, have never been to one. The feedlot is just a huge open field with no grass. Mostly in the Midwest. It's all dirt. There's no shade. Flyover states. That's as it. They yeah, call flyover. Them. There's little bitty shade spots in different places, but it's mostly just open 
pasture, pasture with no dirt because they're walking around, and it got hot. A heat wave came across. See, look at that. Oh, there's grass in the middle, but they don't let the cows out there. Yeah, there's um, the grass, but you don't get on that. Yeah, that's not the cow. That's where they bale the hay to feed the cows. So you see, it's just a dirt lot with no, there's no shade, no nothing. So you got all these cows that are fat because they're fattening them up to pack them. So they're overweight. So you got to get an overweight cow. You got a heat wave come in when it's normally 80 degrees up there. Right. And you get a heat wave to 100 degrees. Yeah. And the wind stops blowing. Yeah. So you're a fat cow standing out in the sun in 100 degrees. And it was cattle COVID. Yeah. So what do you think is going to happen? Death. That's what happened. They got a heat stroke death. and they died. And so about five to 10,000 of them died. Which and, is 0.01% if you've right. ever drove by there. And that's, that's nothing compared to the amount of cattle that are packed. Which is about 80,000 per... 60, 660,000. There. So five to ten thousand not gonna if you're gonna if you got a conspiracy theory and you're gonna try to take away all the food so you can raise prices more, uh, you're gonna do more than about five thousand. Yeah. So it just happened to be a fluke. And if deal. you're dropping the hay at a bad he uh, black helicopter, yeah. I think is a bad bad deal. Yeah. So just a fluke deal that happened, but in today's times you got everybody looking for conspiracy theories. The government's trying to make you look other ways because uh, they don't want to talk about Ghislaine Maxwell's trial. They're like, no, let's find something else to get everybody started up about so we don't talk about this. Yeah. Where's the list of people from Pedophile Island? They're at Daddy Land. Probably were there. Check the guest list. I bet they were there. Was Bill Clinton there? That's the wrong daddy. I don't know. Yeah, he's not that way. He bent the other way. <laughs> he's a pimp Daddy Land. Yeah, he's a um, different way. So, heat stress in feedlots, heat stress in cows. It's hot outside. Make sure your cows got plenty of Plenty of water, Hydrate. plenty of shade, and plenty of clean water to drink. Make sure they got shade. Make sure they got food. If you're in a big feedlot like that, put sprinklers out, guys. Put some, put a little R. Kelly on them. So get some sprinklers going where they can yeah. cool off. It's another conspiracy. He got a rest. He got sent us too the other day, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, message in a bottle found in Virginia, in the river. Where most message in bottles are found. And this was a weird one because it was it was a it was a letdown. We talk about these all the time. We see them because they're interesting. These messages in the bottles, <laughs> but this one was a dud. Okay, <laughs> well let's crank it up. <laughs> this was a dud. A father and son were walking along the York River in Virginia, and they found a message in a bottle that was launched 44 years earlier. So Brian was walking with his son on Monday in York River State Park. They found an old glass Pepsi bottle over on a ledge near the water. The river comes at a four foot drop there and it was just laying there. So they're like, let's check it out. Here's a random bottle. Let's open it. Maybe we can drink the Pepsi. Uh, the bottle contained a note that appeared to have been written by a child. Can we guess what it said before you read it? Uh, Did it sure. say, help, we're trapped in an abandoned Burger King in Delaware? <laughs> Wrong. No. Wrong answer. Right. No, it just said... Uh, Here's my phone number. Call me if you find this. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and he called it and it was a beeper. <laughs> yeah, it started beeping. It's like, what is that even, what is that noise? So the phone number is a dead end, but his wife posted on Facebook like everybody else does. Of course she did. And it was shared by, it was shared hundreds of times within hours. Oh man, almost viral. So some lady named Tracy Kendrick, whose husband Don had thrown the message in the bottle out 44 years ago when he was 12. Okay. They've offered it back to Don, but they haven't heard back from him if he wants it or not. So Meanwhile, like, <laughs> Virginia State Police cited Don for littering. Yeah. That's a, here's a ticket, man. Get out. Ticket. Uh, I guess before we get out of here, while we get down the road, we're going to throw out. There is a movie. We talked about this movie a while ago. It's called Nope, as people are capitalizing on the, uh, the cowboy culture, because apparently, even though the country is turning woke, they still enjoy masculine men on TV, mm. especially at Daddyland. Fair. So this movie's coming out. Check it out. It's called Nope. It's kind of like a sci-fi type. Like a Westworld? Uh, maybe. Let's check it out and see. What if I told you that today you'll leave here different.
I'm talking to you. Bro, what'd you see? Something about the clouds. That's big. How big? Big. You think whatever killed Pops is out there? Right here, you are gonna witness an absolute spectacle. So what happens next? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Here we go. Rich and famous for life. There's plenty of videos for flying shit online. Ain't nobody gonna get what we gonna get. What we gonna get? The money shot. What's up? Undeniable proof of aliens on camera. The Oprah shot. So you guys gonna tell me what's going on? Hell no. no. So I'm out here, and you're the only person in the world that can get it on film. A cloud. They moved an inch. It's aliens. They're just waiting for the perfect time to shove metal probes up our asses. I'll be rooting for you. I think we pissed them off. Yeah, they repainted your house. They're gonna come back. You ready? Huh? We got some work to do. Not it. Nope. I'll get them out. And I'll get the shot. Joe, tell me, what did you see in that cloud? Well, it's not what you think. No! They took him. They took him all. I gotta get out this house. I'm trying to save you. My brother is out there. I don't think they take you. If you don't look at it. What the fuck? The fuck? This dream you're chasing. We end up at the top of the mountain. It's the one you never wake up from. You'll be getting a call from my supervisor asking how my service was. Five stars, Angel, five stars.